Good morning, Excellencies, uh, ladies and gentlemen. I have been tasked with the uh, ultimate challenge on a Sunday morning to give you a crash course on uh, continental shelf. And towards the end, I will show you a few slides of the Icelandic continental shelf. The first question that, that always comes up when discussing the issue is, what is the continental shelf? Uh, you see, as you see on the picture, the continental shelf is the submerged prolongation of the landmass of the coastal state. Uh, and it reaches all the way to the deep ocean floor, consists of the shelf, the slope, and the rise. And you see on the picture the foot of the slope, which is the place where there is the biggest gradient along the, at, at the end of the slope. And this is a very important uh, uh, terms of reference or, or uh, uh, for uh, using formulas for measuring the outer limit of the shelf. How, how far does it reach? So the shelf is the seabed. It has nothing to do with the water column. Now the outer limits of the shelf, first we have a general definition, uh, pretty much the same as I showed you earlier. We now have, in addition, showing you the sediments. Uh, there are usually thick sediments on the shelf, and the thicker they are, the more the prospects for, for oil and gas. Uh, as you see on this picture, what is excluded from the shelf is the deep ocean floor, but also the mid-oceanic ridges, or the oceanic ridges. So the question is, of course, what happens when the oceanic ridges surface, as is the case for Iceland, and we will see later. That's a bit of a different question. We have two formulas uh, for measuring the outer limits of the so-called continental margin. So we could say this is the second step in the definition of the outer limits. The first one was the general definition. This is the second, the two formulas. And you can choose between two formulas. And both of them have in common that the foot of slope is the point of uh, reference. So you start there and you go either 60 miles further, 60 nautical miles out from the foot of slope. That's the so-called uh, 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 Hedberg formula. Or you can also pick a, a spot uh, further out. Uh, if you find a spot where the thickness of the sediments is at least 1% of the distant, distance to the foot of slope. So let's imagine on this picture that we have found a spot 100 nautical miles from the foot of slope. We can use that point if the thickness of sediments is at least 1% of the distance, so one mile if the distance is 100 miles. So you can always choose between these two formulas. To complicate this even further, we have the third <laughs> part of the definition. You have to respect one of two maximums. Either, and this serves to delimit, to, to limit the, the shelf even further compared to the formulas. So you have to either stick within 350 miles from the baselines, that's max one, and then you have max two, which is you have to stay within 100 nautical miles from the 2,500 meter isopath. So where the depth of the ocean is 2,500 meter, you, you draw a line between those points, and then you can go 100 miles beyond that. And again, as was with the two formulas, here you can also choose the better result. So this is one of the most complex things in the law of the sea. So forgive me for going very briefly through this. It's not conditional to understand all of this, but just to know that this is very complex. And so there is a lot of work in, in, involved in, in defining the outer limits. In this example here, the outer limit uh, in this particular example would be the max two because the, uh, the, dis the, the sediment thickness formula gives the best result, but then you have to <coughs> withdraw, and max two gives a better result than max one, so max two is the result. This is just to show uh, uh, how all these formulas and maximum limits are used interchangeably, so in, in order to, to maximize the claim of the coastal state. To complicate this even further, and since we are in Iceland, on the top of the mid-Atlantic grids, I really need to uh, mention this. We have three types of seafloor highs. One is the, uh, 
the, the oceanic grid sits on the deep ocean floor, this is excluded from the continental margin. Then we have so-called submarine ridges. There you have a maximum limit of 350 nautical miles. And then you have submarine elevations that are natural components of the continental margin. In this case, you can choose between the two maximums, so either the 350 miles or 2,500 meters uh, isopath plus 100 nautical miles. Um, so the big question is, like in the case of Iceland, do we have a submarine ridge or do we have a submarine elevation? It's a very big and important question. We have a very important body, one of the three institutions set up under the Law of the Sea Convention. Uh, the Commission on the Limits of the Continental Shelf states that believe that they have a continental shelf beyond 200 nautical miles. All states that have 200 mile zone, exclusive economic zone, have uh, authority over the seabed up to that limit. But in case of natural prolongation of the uh, seafloor beyond 200 nautical miles, uh, states, the states in question must send a submission to the Commission on the Limits of the Continental Shelf, and uh, they must uh, illustrate how they uh, support such a claim. The Commission then uh, studies the uh, submission and makes recommendations regarding the outer limits beyond 200 nautical miles to the coastal state. And if the coastal state establishes the outer limits on the basis of these recommendations by the Commission, after several meetings between the coastal state and the Commission, then these limits are final and binding. So the only way for a coastal state to, to get a final outer limit beyond 200 nautical miles of the continental shelf is to do so on the basis of the recommendations by the Commission. The Commission is a body of 21 <coughs> scientists elected by the state's parties to the Law of the Sea Convention. Importantly, uh, the Commission does not have much role in the case of disputed areas. So, for example, when you have an area that, are, that is claimed by many states, uh, the Commission cannot deal with submissions by any of these states unless all the disputing parties so agree. The legal of status of the continental shelf is, is rather simple. Uh, the coastal state has uh, sovereign rights with respect to exploration and exploitation of the resources of the shelf. Uh, but the water column outside of the 200 mile nautical miles, outside of the exclusive economic zone, is high seas and is untouched by the fact that the coastal state has special rights on the seabed. The resources of the shelf are natural resources, both uh, non-living, like oil and gas, geothermal, etc., but also uh, some living resources, and these are the uh, uh, sedentary species. These are some type of, of shellfish that you find on the, on the uh, shelf and cannot live without touching the, the seabed. Now, coming to our territory, you see that Iceland is sitting on the top of the mid-Atlantic grids, so it's a very exciting uh, issue for scientists and, and, and lawyers to, to figure out how to deal with that rare case. Uh, this is the Icelandic exclusive economic zone first, we, just to show that we have settled all our issues with the neighboring countries, Greenland, uh, Faroes, Norway, and also the UK. We had overlaps with all of these, and uh, we have solved all of these. This is to show you the joint exploitation area between Iceland and Norway between Iceland and Jan Mayen, which belongs to Norway, a very uh, special agreement made in 1981. And turning now to the Icelandic continental shelf, we have three areas. First one, the Eyer Basin in the northeast, we have sold uh, the delimitation there with Norway and the Faroes. The Reykjanes Ridge uh, is uh, towards the southwest. And then the third one is the Hatton Rockall area, which is disputed. Iceland, Ireland, UK, and Faroe Islands, Denmark on behalf of Faroe Islands, they all claim this area. So when Iceland made its submission to the Continental Shelf Commission in 2009, uh, we uh, limited our submission to the Eyer Basin and the western and southern parts of the Reykjanes Ridge, which are uncontested uh, by other states, but left out the disputed Hatton Rockall area, bearing in mind that the Commission does not have a role in case of disputed areas 
And we are now having uh, meetings with the Commission. There is a submission, subcommission established by the Commission of seven members that is uh, dealing with the Icelandic uh, submission. We have had two meetings al already. We'll have a third round in November. And our hope is that we will reach some settlement, some understanding with the Commission perhaps early next year to uh, find a settlement of, of the Icelandic continental shelf towards the south West. Just to underline that uh, uh, Iceland does not have any claim as far as, as far as continental shelf is concerned in the Arctic and uh, the Central Arctic Ocean. We are closed off, so to say, by Greenland and Jan Mayen and Norway, etc. But of course, that does not mean that we do not have rights there in terms of fishing, shipping, etc. But as you see from this uh, uh, picture, we have certainly sufficient continental shelf area to be concerned about. This is just to show a, a, a profile along the mid-Atlantic ridge from, from the south to the north. And you see the so-called Charlie Gibbs fracture zone. This is the, the southern limit uh, according to our own estimates of the continental shelf. You could say, well, if you want to walk, if you want to hike the mountain Iceland, where do you start that walk? I would say you start it on the Charlie Gibbs fracture zone. So again, this is the, the, the picture, and our southern border is, is at that place. And we will find out pretty soon uh, the, the, what is going to be precisely the settlement, the, the understanding reached between, between Iceland and the uh, Commission. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thomas Heider. Uh, the, the next speaker uh, is also from Iceland, Bjarni Mar Magnusson, specialist at the uh, School of Law at the University of Reykjavik, who will address the topic of whether the United States has the right to, an to a continental shelf in the Arctic. <laughs> 